Now let's rig this worm. We'll go to character and just create a joint here. And I'll switch to the side view to see what's going on. And to make this joint chain, first we'll start kind of in the middle. We're not going to have the very bottom of the worm moving at all. And then here we can just hold control and drag up. And then we just need to drop this joint into the parent joint. And you can keep control drag in here. Although that doesn't put this new joint under this joint, so you still have to drag this in. And it's often a good idea to slightly offset these just so they have an angle that's not totally zero, zero, zero. It might not matter when we bring this into Spark, but that's just something I've noticed in Cinema 4D. So another way to do it is just a control drag here, and then I'll duplicate it and then just drop it in that same joint. And then just pull that up. We also want to be able to animate this section up here. So let's duplicate this joint, but keep it in the same hierarchy. And then we can drag this over, and we'll duplicate this and drag that. And then over here, we need to drop it into this joint. So this one might be more like the lower flaps, kind of controlling more of this area and the you know chin. And then this back joint will be able to take control of the head area and that upper lip. And it's always important to name your joints, so we'll do that really quick. And in Cinema 4D, you can just tap up and down to rename all these really quick. Now with those joints in place, we can bind this. So select everything, go to character and bind. And that will make this weight paint tag here. If you double click that, you can see how each joint is affecting it with this weight painting. And usually it does a pretty good job if you have your joints in a good spot. So let's just test this out. That looks decent. So you can see here the lower lips are being affected by this joint, so we might have to paint that out. And I think we might need one more joint for this chin, because this is branching off here. That means this doesn't really do anything. So in order for this to work, I think we need to add one more joint. So let's pull that back here and then control drag this out. And then just drop that into the chin and rename this lower lip. And to make sure we start fresh, we'll just drop under the worm, delete the skin and the weight, then select all, go to character and bind. Now this chin joint actually takes effect. But it looks like we still need to fix the head a little bit. So to weight paint here, we just double click on the weight paint tag. And you can see again how these are all laid out. And to open the options, if you shift double click on this, it'll bring up the weight manager. And then you can go to the joints tab and see what each of the joints are doing. So in our case, you can see this head joint is affecting quite a bit down here. And then the chin, we need to just push up a little bit. But before we go on weight paint, let's see if we can auto weight this in a different way. So in the auto weight tab, by default, it uses a heat map, we can try distance. You can see it changed, but I don't think it fixed our issue. It's actually not bad. And just to test it, let's also try volumetric for the auto weight and see if that does any better. It 
looks like the head might be a little better than it was before. But now the chin is a little too aggressive. So I think let's stick with the distance it seemed to do a good job. I'm just clicking calculate here to set that. And I think I hit calculate when I had one of these joints selected. So make sure you have either none of these selected or all of them. That's why I was going back here to select this every time I did the auto weight. So if it's ever looking kind of chunky when you do the auto weight, you can turn up the smooth iterations by one or two and then calculate again. And you'll see that it tries to smooth it out. It's never going to do a perfect job, but sometimes it helps a little bit. So I think that's as good as the auto weights are going to get. So let's do a little painting. I'll select the chin and make sure to kind of cover this whole area up here. And middle click to the right and left to change the size of this. And now you see when I select the head, none of this lower lip is colored except maybe just a little bit of a corner so if you select the top here the worm it'll select everything and then under commands we can change the mode to smooth and then apply all and you can see that blends everything together and just smooths it out you can just keep clicking this as as long as you want and it'll continue blending all that together Now let's see if that does a better job. And if you want to rotate multiple at a time, you can select a handful of these. And I'm just holding control to select multiple and then hitting R for rotate, switching over to object axis, you can choose per object manipulation, and that should rotate all of these at the same time. So you can see how that bends around. With this off, you can see it rotates all of them as one unit. So doing this rotates each around their own axes. Obviously, we don't have to worry about the head rotating like that, so. It actually works really nicely down here. You can see that that overlap there is kind of nice. Anyway, so that should be all we need to do to get this working in Spark. So now we just need to export this all together. So I'll make a null. And again, this shelf I've made for myself, but if you hold shift and press C, you can get this little command module. And then you can type pretty much anything you can possibly do in Cinema 4D. And it will show you all your options. And you can actually click and drag these and drop them anywhere in the UI. And it'll drop that icon. So now I have a null little button there. And I can just make a bunch of nulls with. And to remove that you can right click and go to customize palettes. And then I think you just double click to delete that. And if you do make changes, you need to make sure to save them in the UI. Otherwise, when you switch around either in here or when you restart cinema, all of this will go away. So to do that, you just go to window customization and save as startup layout. We'll set it as the default. You can also save as or load different ones or see all your available ones there. So here I have my kind of favorites that I made that I want really close to my object manager. So I'll rename this null to worm. I'm going to put the mesh on top and then just drag these in. And just to double check, all of these joints have unique names, which is super important in Spark. And our weights are good. Everything hopefully should be good. Let's see if the worm is also zeroed out by selecting that and going to coordinates. Looks like we're 100 units up on the Y. 
which makes sense the axis is here. And the base is also at 80 centimeters. I might just zero this out. One thing I've noticed exporting rigs out of Cinema 4D is the more zeros you can get in your rig, the better. So if all of these has a, have a rotation of zero, that's nice. Their positions obviously can't all be zero, but yeah, it just seems to simplify things the more kind of zeroed out all this can be. All right, so let's export. Just select the object. Just the parent one is all you need. And go to File, Export, FBX. And we'll have Selection Only. And then we do want to include the normals. There's no animation. And the default Fong Lambert materials are good there. And that should be all we need. And oftentimes rigs from Cinema 4D into Spark have a lot of problems, especially from Cinema. So another option is to export as a GLTF, which is right here. And these have different options. The important one is the skin and that includes the skin here, which is including all the weight painting. And other than that, it looks like all these settings are good.